All right. Our first storyteller up tonight will be Ames Granadas. She's a writer performer who grew up in Tucson, but since but spent 16 years in LA. She trained for Improv at Upright Citizens Brigade and did competitive storytelling because apparently that's a thing in LA. <laughs> She's a Moth Story Slam winner and her solo show, Jackass, A Prom Story, won an Encore Producers Award at the Hollywood Fringe Festival. She lives for her two nephews and two nieces, so give a big hand here for Ames. So, as a teenager, I was a big wisher. 1111, 555, 222. At these times, I made wishes big and small. I sent them out into the universe. Many of these came true, and I chalked it up to good luck. I had so much good luck that I assumed I was going to be hit by a bus by the time I was 20. Seriously, I assumed that God was squeezing in all the luck that the average person has across their entire life into the few short years of early adolescence because I was going to die young. <laughs> How did this luck manifest itself? Very simply, I won stuff on the radio. Yep. I would hear that little dial tone on 93.7 KRQ and I would be I would be lucky caller number 8 over and over again. I won stuff on other radio stations but KRQ was my real cash cow. <laughs> One time I won something I couldn't have and it still stings. I was in a contest to win not one but two Camaros. My name was drawn, but I couldn't have them because I was underage. It was truly tragic. But I learned something really important that day. Did I learn that I should not enter contests with prizes that weren't eligible to those of all ages? Nope. I learned to lie. <laughs> From that day forward, whenever I won something, I lied and said I was my mom, no matter what the prize was. One night, I was lying on my bedroom floor, doing my homework, listening to the radio. My phone was next to me, just in case. Sure enough, I heard the dial tones and thought, shoot your shot. I was caller number eight. I lied and said I was my mom, and I won a copy of Will Smith's album, Big Willie Style. Cool, I thought, and went right back to doing my homework. That was in ninth grade. Ninth grade was pretty mediocre but eighth grade had been life-changing. The highlight of the year was the long-awaited trip to Washington, D.C. The entire class went on a week-long trip to D.C., and it was magical. I fantasized about being away with all of my best friends. Who would I sit next to on the plane? Who would be in my hotel room? Would anyone hook up at Bush Gardens? The possibilities were endless. From the moment I got on the plane, I was in heaven. I was walking on air. It was just absolutely perfect. I'll always treasure the memory of Mrs. Fold, my second favorite English teacher, singing Killing Me Softly on the bus. And I'll never forget the game I invented. Jessica White, Gail McClellan, and I would go up to complete strangers at the Smithsonian Museum and pretend like we knew them. Oh my gosh, Jim, it's so good to see you. How are you? And when they said they didn't know us, we persisted. Anyway, I loved Washington, D.C. And when it was time to go back to Tucson, my heart ached. Now, at one special 11-11, I wished that I could go back to Washington, D.C. A simple wish, but a big one. One I didn't really see coming true. Now. One day before school started, in ninth grade, I got called to the principal's office before classes started. I was nervous. I'd never been called to the principal's office before. That would come later that year when I was accused of vandalizing the girls' bathroom after someone had etched Amy G. Sucks into one of the bathroom mirrors. 
Funny note about those mirrors, I was picking up my kid sister years ago at school and um, they were renovating the girls' bathrooms and the mirror that had my name etched into it was outside on the ground. That's me. I said, I'm Amy G. I suck. Can I have it? No, they would not let me have it. Anyway, I got called into the office. Mrs. Fold, my second favorite English teacher, was holding out the phone. Her look was somber. She looked like someone had died. Hello? I said, this is John J. and Rich from 93.7 KRQ. You just won a trip to Washington, D.C. to meet Will Smith. How do you feel? What? I said, let's try this again, the man said. This is John J. and Rich from 93.7 KRQ. You just won a trip to Washington, D.C. to meet Will Smith. How do you feel? What? I said again. The man on the other line was annoyed. Your mom won a big Willie style CD a few weeks ago and she was entered into a drawing to win a trip to Washington DC to meet Will Smith and visit him on the set of the movie he's filming, Enemy of the State. We called your mom, but she was at work and honestly didn't sound excited enough. <laughs> So she told us to call you. We're going to pretend to call you again, and you need to sound excited. Okay? Okay, I said. This is John Jane Rich from 93.7 KRQ. You just won a trip to Washington, D.C. to meet Will Smith. How do you feel? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't believe it. Thank you. At least, I imagine that's what I said. I don't actually remember. I was so overwhelmed with shock that the memory never got stored. And I don't remember who the DJs were, so I just went with John Jay and Rich, who are the DJs now on KRQ. All I know is that I am so glad that I lied and said I was my mom when I won that CD. If I'd given my own name, I wouldn't have been able to go. See, this is why I thought I was going to die. Because I made a wish, a big, big wish, and it came true. Now, there's something we need to address. The elephant in the room, Will Smith. <laughs> no one saw the Oscar slap coming. However you feel about him now, though, his popularity back in 1997 is undeniable. Independence Day had just come out. It grossed over $300 million. His album, Big Willie Style, sold over 16 million copies. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air ran for six seasons and was a huge hit. He was America's sweetheart, a real good guy at the height of his success. So we now live in a world with post-slap Will. But I was getting to meet pre-slap Will <laughs> at the pinnacle of his career. The fact that I was getting to meet Will in Washington, D.C. made absolutely no sense. He lived in Los Angeles. It would have made sense to meet him there. He often worked in New York. It would have made sense to meet him there. Or in West Philadelphia, born and raised. <laughs> On the playground is where he spent most of his days. Even West Philadelphia would have made sense. If you didn't watch 90s TV correctly, that's the intro to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's theme song. Anyway, what are the odds that I would get to meet Will in Washington, D.C., the one place where I had wished to go? The details of the trip were mind-blowing. Mom and I would be flown from Tucson to D.C. for a five-day trip with the hotel covered, we would meet Will on the film set on the first day and then have the rest of the time to sightsee. When we got to DC, there were about 12 other winners. We were all on a bus together led by Will's publicist. I don't remember her name, but I will never forget her voice or her tagline. Nothing went as planned that day and she uttered the words, I'm so sorry, in her nasally whine at least 20 times. Initially, the plan had been to meet Will on the film set, observe them filming, and then get pictures with him. Due to the weather, however, they were filming interior car scenes and there wouldn't be room for us to observe. Apparently, there was no backup plan. I'm so sorry, the publicist said. And we waited and waited and waited. 
Eventually, they found a place suitable for us to meet Will, a place with enough room for all of the fans, enough privacy so that Will wouldn't be mobbed, and enough class to match the caliber of Will's stature. Where was this place, you ask? A Golden Corral Buffet. <laughs> yep, the same place where you can pack your plate with mac and cheese and whatever they're passing off as ribs and steak was where we headed. We went into a private room closed off with those folding walls and waited and waited and waited. I'm so sorry, the publicist said. Finally, Will arrived, and he was exactly as jovial, friendly, and energetic as you would expect him to be. We took turns meeting him, getting pictures, and having him sign autographs. I've got a great picture of my mom, Will, and me, and I post it on my socials every Mother's Day. But you don't have to take my word for it. Then he was gone. Just like that, it was over. And with a few more, I'm so sorry, we got back on the bus and headed back to our hotel. Looking back, I am so grateful that we met Will on our first day there. Had we waited five days and then had the encounter at the Golden Corral Buffet, it would have been a little anticlimactic. As it was, we had a so-so encounter with Will than four days together in DC. Now, a few things to note about four days in DC with my mom. I'm the oldest of four. My family would spend a week together in San Diego during the summer, but we would never go on solo trips with either parent. Except for that one time when my mom went on a cruise with my youngest sister Melissa's Girl Scout troop, which I'm not bitter about at all, <laughs> like at all. My family motto back in those days was scoot over. There were six of us, but there was always room for more. We had aunts and cousins living with us at different times, even kids from different families. My mom was the kind of mom that would make my friends say, I wish your mom was my mom. So wishing for four days with my mom all to myself was something I never would have thought to wish for because I wouldn't have thought it was possible. So we spent the next four days doing touristy things. We went to museums, we rode the metro. I'll give my mom some credit, I was a little moody, and I was listening to Fiona Apple's title album on repeat. <laughs> but I treasured our time together. A friend of a friend is a successful DJ on the East Coast. He's taken a little bit of the magic out of the whole just be caller number eight thing for me. He said that sometimes DJs just go for whoever is sounding the most exciting. And nowadays, you have to text a keyword into nationwide contests. But if you ever get a chance to enter a real contest, a fair one, and you happen to be under the age of 18, you should absolutely lie and say you're your mom. Shoot your shot. Wish big, because you never know when those wishes might be granted or when you might get hit by a bus. Thank you.